Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is D Speaks You Think on Rolling Out Live. Now, it looks a little different. It's only two of us. And guess who is not here? Devetta Collins, mm. Dunamis D. Mm. She's not here, but I'm going to tell you she's here in spirit. Yes, she, is. she is. She is actually officiating. She's a life coach. One of our sisters in our program, son, passed away in California. Mm. She is right there officiating just doing what she does from a spiritual perspective, a leadership perspective, but most of all, as a woman. And I am so grateful. Before she left, we had the one and only. We had a conversation mm. with Wood, okay. Chef Wood, Lick okay. Kitchen. Okay. We said, you know what? We need you. Mm. We thought about a co-host. And in thinking about a co-host, who better than a Midwesterner? Who better? Who better? Who better? Who better? Mm -hmm. So we came here today. We're coming here today. I am Michelle Obasi, the co-host of D Speaks You Think. I have a co-host today, Mr. Wood. <laughs> we, doing, we doing good, man. We coming at you, man. Shooting live and direct. I you appreciate you setting up. No, we appreciate you. I'm going to tell you, when I first met, when I f we first came to Rolling Out, all of us had to audition. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell your story because in that is how I came to admire you. In that is why you're sitting here today. Okay. Because the title of the show is The Necessity of the Black Man's Grind. Okay. And when you, w when they hear your story, they're going to know why you had to be here today. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. Um, again, I'm Wood, man. Nice to meet you out there. I haven't uh, already tuned in to Lick Kitchen. It comes on right before this, you know. Um, Lick Kitchen has been something that um, I had actually, it's kind of like a brainchild out of what I have had done previously, mm -hmm. which, um, I got signed when I was 16. I used to do music, mm -hmm. you know, and um, as that kind of wavered financially, I kind of okay. fell off into the streets. Mm. And uh, I had attempted to get my things together after people like uh, Jay Nix and Ludacris had like kind of made their way mm -hmm. in like broadcasting and things like this and DJing. So I attempted to go to college and try to see what I could do, but I went up there <laughs> and didn't <laughs> learn that neither, you know, and mm -hmm. I ended up catching a. Uh, a kind of serious case, and God just granted me the serenity to kind of um, be granted the opportunity of probation. Okay. And with that, I end up uh, kind of just hitting the crossroads, wondering, like, what else would I do other than music mm -hmm. or, or, or other than the streets? And uh, I thought about what I spent the most money on financially, and it honestly had became – it honestly had became a, um, a thing where, like, okay, I eat three or four times a day. Right on. And I eat good <laughs> three, four times a day. So I'm like, if 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 just one person getting what I was used to giving one of these chefs, you know, in a daily span, then I'm I'm good, mm -hmm. you know. So I um ironically like a uh, cooking show, a cooking commercial came on, and I was like, okay, it must be a sign. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the next two three days, I started visiting different culinary institutions and just seeing what they had to offer. I end up going to culinary school. Okay. You know, okay. and uh, I really, really, really took to it. I cannot lie. You know, I took to it, and uh, cause I didn't know nothing about cooking. Mm -hmm. I used to think that, um, you know, when you see, like, chicken and meat in, yeah. in the freezer, yeah. I used to think that was real blood. Like, I didn't know the, Okay. You know, like you of course, now it's my globe and things exactly, like that. But, you know, exactly. I really used to think, oh, that's blood. I'm not touching that. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know. It, it it shocked me to see food come from the freezer to you know <laughs> to the plate you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I, I, I was never present okay. so um, when I actually did have a luxury to go into culinary school I just took to every single thing and just mm -hmm. overlearned and just over you know just over absorbed everything mm -hmm. and I think due to how I used to spend money on food you know my palate had just developed so crazy you know okay. so I was having like 
Ruth Chris and Papa Doe's expectations. Mm, okay, okay. On my, you know, my first year in, you know, and I think that's what made me kind of good. And after that, I ended up graduating, and uh, I started selling plates. Okay. Because I used to hang around with the chefs, and uh, they had a situation with Verizon where they actually did um, concerts, mm-hmm. and I used to, you know, go to the um, the concerts just to pretty much see the concerts for free, mm-hmm. and you know, be an intern on the bus. I mean, on the uh, food truck. Food trucks used to make like three thousand dollars within like a two mm-hmm. hour like mm-hmm. span at they big make money. festivals like that, and that just boggled me. Like, mm-hmm. okay, this real money, like real yeah. legal money, and you know, the th- that was a thrill within itself. Just seeing, you know, that that custom that that hand to hand transaction, mm-hmm. that customer, um, the customer. Um, I've never seen nobody like smile. Okay. Or like you know, like that when it comes to food, like food really make people happy. Like yeah, it's it like, and it don't got nothing to do with you. Like right, you know, it's right. like it's a, it's like a nostalgic thing. You see people's mm-hmm. faces turn from, you know, frown to smiles exactly. off food. You know, so that was something that kind of like made me understand, like okay, what I'm doing is, it's relevant. It's, it's what I'm relevant. It's good. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying it's God. Like you know, so when I graduated, <coughs> I had efforts of trying to get a food truck myself. Mm-hmm. But the money was just. Far fetched, you know. Okay. Like it cost about a hundred grand uh, to get one. As far as if you want to just fully hooked up, exactly. It's you good. know what I'm saying? Like straight hundred grand. So I was just trying to use some of that black ingenuity, mm-hmm. and I ended up buying a uh, ice cream truck, <laughs> and I um, took out the um, I took out everything that even looked like ice cream, just kind of um, mm-hmm. uh, reverted it into you know my own little thing. I put um, put a heating and cooler in there. I put some cam rolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, we signed it up. Um, Made like a little platform okay. out of the, uh, made it a nice little little hood uh, okay. pull up truck, and I did th- uh, the plates called pull up plates. Okay. And I made a different meal, you know, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and I pulled up wherever you was in the city. Okay. And that just really grew nostalgically. And uh, Nelly's had a school, and they ended up backtracking, asking me if I want to be like the caterer mm-hmm. for that institution. So that ended up happening, and then I start, you know. Rapping again, okay. you know, once my probation and stipulations like pretty much let up, because mm-hmm. they became proud of me. I was cooking for the the, <laughs> the office at the, the probation right. office, so yeah, it was a, it was a cool thing. Everybody in the city was kind of proud to see me turn a new leaf. So mm-hmm. I uh, got back in the studio, dropped a few more songs, and one of them got picked up on like CSI. Mm-hmm. The next one I dropped got picked up on Power, the first season. That's it. Yeah, so I, that's that's what I felt like. All right, that's like, it. like that's, that's it. it. All right, so let me put something together. So I. Uh, Visited Atlanta, and uh, one of my partners, he's like a producer, and he, you know, just let me know, like, bro, you need a show. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, at this point, I, it ain't go, it ain't got to be about me because I see how mm-hmm. short lived that can be. Right. So I'm just like, well, let me put together what I'm what I'm doing, but like try to highlight others, mm-hmm. and you know, and if it catch for me, it catch. But at least they knew it. I was trying to put a platform for everybody to do what I did. Mm-hmm. So. Birthly Kitchen. That's <laughs> you it, know, that's yeah, it. Birthly Kitchen. You know what? Well you said a lot, and a lot was needed to be said. Mm-hmm. Let everybody know he's from St. Louis. Yeah, when I say sure. Midwest, St. Louis, when you North talk about side. Nelly, when you talk about everybody, St. Louis is it. My family's from St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. My grandfather is, is from St. Louis, and my great-grandmother was one of the first black entrepreneurs in St. Louis. Mm. So we got history. We got power just yeah. as a people, period. One of the things I like that you said is that you, one of the things that you were saying in your story mm-hmm. is that you never gave up. No, no. You no. were here. You went to the streets. Streets kind of got you caught up. Yeah. After that, you reinvented yourself. You said ingenuity. Mm-hmm. One of the things and one of the reasons why I really wanted to have this show is because a lot of black men don't bounce back. Right. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. How, how, tell me about that. I'm not a black man. I'm a black woman, but I watch black men. Some bounce back, some but don't, and it breaks my heart uh-huh. when those can't. Well, I won't say they don't bounce back. What was it? What was that burning desire on the inside of you that said, "I can't live like this. I'm not gonna live in the system." Um, when you ask that question, are you asking more what are the the cons of the black man, or what are some of the things I did to overcome those cons? Tell me both. Um, I mean, once you're in that system, it's crazy because it seems like they do everything they can to kind of keep you in it. Yeah. You know, um, the intervention fees and stuff like that. That's cool, but it's really kind of like. How can I say it? Like, okay, now this this is just this is just keeping it like honest. Yeah, everybody that's what I want. that has done illegal activity.
probably shouldn't have been going. You know, Most uh, definitely. every drug dealer, every you know, uh, every every person that did some type of uh, illicit business move that mm -hmm. did it, they might not have been doing it. But for that percentage of people who, how can I say it, had big dreams mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. really probably could run a you know a multi million dollar company, mm -hmm. just started off in the wrong neighborhood mm -hmm, with the wrong mm -hmm. people. I feel like when they get out of jail, those or prison, those uh, ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting a good life. Correct. Ain't nothing. Uh, there isn't anything wrong with no, wanting a good life. No, ain't nothing wrong. We don't yeah, do yeah, all of that. Yeah, ain't nothing yeah. wrong There's with nothing having wrong a good life. A good Most life. definitely. There's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to provide for your family, wanting to get your grandmother a house, wanting mm -hmm. to nine to fives don't provide for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, if you can, you can, and there's nothing wrong with it, but you need a hell of a nine to five to provide that. Meaning, you should have already been in college. Mm -hmm. You should have already graduated with mm -hmm. honors. You should have already met you some people, got you in a, a fraternity or sorority, and got you plugged in. Because not only about what you know, it's about who you know. Correct. But at the point where you're 25, or 26, and you ain't already in that corporate world making you over 100K, then you already behind. Mm -hmm. So, people that think, like, certain people just think different, you right. know. And f I feel like when people get out of prison and jail, they don't help those people with those big dreams and big mindsets mm -hmm. really bounce back financially you know like it's like okay get a job mm -hmm. these people wasn't working for ten dollars an hour exactly. when they was ten they was exactly you know so to put them back in this world where they are so used to things that the people who do legal things are used to mm -hmm. we pass each other at gucci we pass each other at the club we pass each other at the restaurant mm -hmm. like these people you know and then people sit up and watch empire and power every day mm -hmm. like these ain't the lives that these people are really living in front of right, you right. It, it, it ain't it ain't there there isn't anything wrong with it until you get caught that's Correct. when you can laugh and like oh, mm -hmm. ah, he knew better but right. it's, it's, it's it's something you watching every day on stars until you go to jail mm -hmm. you know or you go to prison so i feel like food was my little refuge because okay. i get I, i've always gotten a rush counting money you know like mm -hmm. that's my thing and i it always made me I can't get my grandmother house and my mother house on a fixed income. Correct. If I know I'm making this much every month, either I got to save and go without mm -hmm. to try to do something or I got to create some other type of side hustle. So it's mm -hmm. like that entrepreneurial spirit. And my my father, Barbara, my mother, a real estate agent. So you we've always did our own blood. thing. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we used to own property back in the day and stuff like We still do. So that that little bug that's always been, been in me to do my own mm -hmm. thing, it's just doing it the right the way. The legal way. Yeah, but if you're a hustler, you know, you should be able to do anything. You know, I always like to dispel the myth. And mm -hmm. many, many people talk about hustlers and hustling and different things of that nature. I remember when, in 1989, crack came into my neighborhood mm -hmm. and just devastated all of us. Yeah. And I remember we had businesses. We had a lot of things going on. But all of my friends, mm -hmm. all of my friends that mm -hmm. I grew up with, dead, jail, or just they own drugs yeah, themselves. And they heavy. haven't recovered. It hit yeah. really heavy. But I always used to say, you know, let's pool our money. Mm -hmm. Let's do what you're doing. I have a brain. Understood. I have this power in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not an, I'm not smart. They're smart. You're mm -hmm. smart. Right. I'm intelligent. I got that book smart. Right. We need each other. Right. And so nobody was listening. Nobody was hearing it in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now you know the other neighborhoods, the mobs and all of those stuff. They know how Italians, to do it. They yeah. know how Italians, to get down. Yeah, they Italians know how to bring it together. It. Yeah. But for us. It's not, oh, he's wrong and he's right. He just got out of jail. He this and he that. Mm -hmm. We all come together. We all got the same power and we pull it together. Right, right. Thank God that you had the ability to God, deep, yeah. dig deep into yourself. It ain't yeah. nothing but God no, that you're sitting yeah, here. It ain't exactly. nothing but God yeah. that I'm sitting here. Yeah. I could have been a whole lot of things. Yeah, facts. I could have been a whole lot of places and I have and I know you have. Right. But it's that understanding who we are and mm -hmm. understanding our greatness and from a historical perspective we just don't get that anymore. Yeah. I don't know how old you are. I'm 47. Okay. So I grew up in a whole nother era. I'm 19. 19. 19. I almost cussed. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're 19, no, I'm 19, 12. No, no, but you know, we have to really go back to really understanding who we are. Understood. You, from a foundation, mm -hmm. I know, and you could tell me, you understood who you are was from a young man yeah. because it was plugged in you. Yeah. My mother didn't go past high school. Mm -hmm. I don't know who my father is, but my family instilled who I was, Understood. what cut, what cloth I was really cut, cut from. from. Right. And it wasn't rosy. It mm -hmm. wasn't peachy. It mm -hmm. was, it was a whole bunch of stuff, Heard. but I had a sense of purpose mm -hmm. and I had a sense of me. 
And I want each and all, all of you all, when you're listening to us, really listen to what Wood is saying. He's not talking about this glamorous story. He's talking about how he was plugged in and understood his greatness from a very young age. That's cool. I appreciate and that. You know what? I really want you to talk to as we're going out. We got a few more minutes, but really talk to these young men. Okay. Because these young men are lost. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. what is it that you can say? And each time we go out, it's not about me. Okay. I can talk all day. Right. I want you to really speak to these young men and speak to them about you don't have to be trapped. No, you don't. You don't. It's um. Uh, I mean, it's a generational thing to me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I was just talking to my partner about it. You know, uh, we're not really in a space where people are getting married or, you mm -hmm. know, you seeing a, a, a home with, you know, a mother and a father in it, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that already starts off the imbalance, you mm -hmm. know, and I think now we to a point where people not even really promoting marriages, you know, like mm -hmm. um, the the stability from home is lacking so i'm think i think social media social things is playing more to parent and it gives the these new generation of millennials the opportunity to kind of be who they want to be mm -hmm. or who they mm -hmm. think they need to be in right. order to be where they want to go mm -hmm. and there's just not any real solid uh, rational like you said mm -hmm. examples which really start from home but all these homes are so broken that people only have certain things to look at in order, you know, to, to or in lieu to become something, you know. Most definitely. It's crazy. Most definitely. Uh, from a historical perspective, people, we always and always tell you our history did not start with slavery. Mm -hmm. Our history started with in Africa, just the grandest of the grand, the grandeur of the grandeur. We have been through some things, oppression Ooh, forever. Big Wakanda, forever. Big Wakanda forever. when it first started. You know, and that's true. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that yeah. when you saw Black Panther, you saw our history. Yeah, you, did. you just saw a portion of it. But honestly, I want to get back in, and we got about a few minutes left, but I want to get back in, and when we come back, you are going to hear more about from a historical perspective who we are but then we get into Wood's business and we talk about life and relationships I already warned him man, we're going to get did, all into did. his business did, and uh, I want you to tune back in because this is going to be a great segment you're going to learn more about the man who has a mission who yeah. has a purpose who's doing his thing in Atlanta from St. Louis the Midwest yeah. we'll be back D Speaks You Think Stay give tuned. us a second Bye. With customizable streaming TV from Xfinity, watch the most free TV shows, hit movies, and live sports on the go. At home, access Netflix, YouTube, and Pandora right from your TV. And with the X1 Voice Remote, just say it and see it. Show me HBCU. With Black Film and TV, watch your favorite college entertainment, HBCU football games, and much more. Xfinity. Simple, easy, awesome. This week on the kitchen. Yeah. 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 Hold up. Tell me. All right. Got translate. I just want to answer what y'all asked me. We got great. DJ DBI. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hold up. Chef Chris. Yeah. Hold up. Tell me. Porcelain Gold. God blessing me often. I'm still looking in the apartment. I know they keep in my deposit. I got burn holes in the coffee. All I know is old. All I know is both. All I know is those. Look inside the door. With customizable streaming TV from Xfinity, watch the most free TV shows, hit movies, and live sports on the go. At home, access Netflix, YouTube, and Pandora right from your TV. And with the X1 Voice Remote, just say it and see it. Show me HBCU. With Black Film and TV, watch your favorite college entertainment, HBCU football games, and much more. Xfinity. Simple, easy, awesome. Like ten to two. Uh, 
All right, all right, all right. You ready? All right. All right, all right. All right, all right. We are live. Back to Speaks You Think. I have the one and only Wood with me. If you're just tuning yeah. in, you obviously see that D is not here. I want to say it one more time. D is in California. She just officiated a funeral of one of our sisters in the Understand Your Greatness coaching program. That's what she does. She, she regrets not being here. Can we have a moment of silence for her? You know what? That would be cool if we just like, you know. We have a moment of silence for that young brother who lost his life. Okay. So many of our young brothers are losing their lives before they realize their full potential. Yeah, man. One of the things that D and I do, and if you all have noticed, most of our guests are men. We are really empathic about raising the voice of our real awesome men. We are really empathic about giving black men especially a voice because the enemy does not want it. The enemy of this world, the systems of this <laughs> world, the social media of this world, the media of this world, period, do against, not you know? want to give you all yeah, a voice. Yeah. And uh, it goes back to I was just leaving off with understanding your greatness and the power you possess. Again, our Appreciate ancestors did a lot, it's took a lot, have been through a lot. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that being uh, wealthy, being entrepreneurs, having that entrepreneurial spirit is part of our DNA. Yeah. A lot of that was taken from us in slavery. A lot of that was taken in colonialism. A lot of that is taken through the systems that we have. Oh, so you're dropping knowledge, knowledge. All type of knowledge. All right, all right. You know, welfare system where the man couldn't be in the house. You touched on something that was so powerful. You're talking about the breakdown of the black family. Right. The, we don't see mamas and daddies no, we in don't. the households. No, we don't. And now you was attributing to that to the impact of our next generation not really understanding who they are. And having these trials and tribulations mm -hmm. that they're going through. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I wanted you to touch on it if you wanted a little bit more before I got in your business. I know. Um, well, yeah, I said all that to say exactly what you alluded to. The, the fact that, you know, most of our young don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and they look to different social platforms and the things like that to kind of figure it out. And... Um, you ain't never seen so many sad ass kids. Mm hmm. They are. You know what I'm saying? Like Depressed. the music you hear, the way mm -hmm. they look into the camera. You know what I'm saying? Like I rock with Juice World. I rock with Lil Uzi. But them some sad ass looking kids. You know, even RIP Extension. Like he was suicide. You know, that was a song that mm -hmm. he came out with before he died. Mm -hmm. He felt the mm -hmm. need to go into a, you know, a, um, a church mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, portray, um, the, the idea of him actually already passing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a firm believer of speaking things into existence. And I just feel like with the music and the energy that is is, presume, is presumed pop pop now, mm -hmm. it's sad. It's very it's, it's sad. It's sad, man. You know, and uh, it's, it's just sad. And It's indicative of where the people's hearts are. Mm -hmm. When we were younger, we had love stories yeah. we had ojs we had people who actually learned how to love right where they're looking at their mother their father their grandfather mm -hmm. nowadays the destruction of the families right nobody right. knows how to love so what you're gonna get is a uh, truffle and all this other stuff you're gonna get a Nicki minaj you're gonna get all of that that's over sexualized over depressed and suicidal because that's where the minds of, and the hearts of our children are yeah and that's because of what we've been talking about not understanding who you are, not being able to bounce back when things happen. And mm -hmm. a lot of us, and, and I thank God I never got hooked on weed. I never got hooked, you know, on crack. I never got hooked on the alcohol. I'm serious. No, 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 no. I, I was, never got I mean, hooked on all of that. I had to make eye contact with my people because, uh, you know, you know, addictions drive hard. Yeah. You know, and it's just a piece of it and a part of it. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you. And I want to ask you your belief. Mm -hmm. There's this saying that uh, behind every great man is a great woman. Yeah, uh, yeah. How true is that in your life? Yeah, I think that is 100% true. I don't always think it's a, um, a spouse or a wife. Okay, speak on it. Like, even my mother knows, even my other grandmother knows that um, the amount of things that my grandmother uh, Callie has done for me, mm -hmm. uh, my mother's mother, mm -hmm. you know, through you know, I, I stayed with her when I got kicked out, and mm -hmm. she showed up at my high school to get me back, you mm -hmm. know, going to school, and um, she just actually had always like been there, you know, so mm -hmm. she 
is the woman behind me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just crazy that that is 100%. It's like I said, it's just not necessarily a spouse. It's, it's, it's a it woman. It could be your mother. It yeah, could be my, your aunt. My grandmother is, is definitely the driving force in everything I do. And it's almost like a... Um, like a damn near time clock, cause mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. with me just getting this position, she not getting no younger, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like I'm pushing it as fast, and you know, then then an actual relationship, cause I feel like I'm on ball time mm-hmm. with my success. So it's like the things that I'm trying to get, the things that I'm trying to um, achieve, is for her, you know, for mm-hmm. her, you know. Like I, when I went back home, um, I had an interview on the news, and. Uh, I gave her the opportunity to come on there. All my grandmothers and my auntie, mm-hmm. and I let the news interview them and talk to them like that was me, you know. And just things like that is like giving them their roses while they still here. That's important, you and know? you you paying homage to the people who made you. Yeah, to my day one. I think ones. I looked on your Instagram and you said those <laughs> yeah, were your my day, day ones. ones. Yeah, and I love ones. when you said that. I was going to yeah. ask you about that yeah. because a lot of us forget our day ones. I can soul. never forget about my aunts. Yeah, I can never forget about my uncles, yeah. those who protected me, my brother. Those people who came before, those are my day ones. And, yeah. and in relationships, I will be honest with you. I, I'm teasing about, you know, getting in your business. And I right. already know you, you ain't going to let that happen. You're going to be <laughs> wood. But the thing is, I find that so many men, and this mm. is why I talk about the, the, necessity, the necessity of your grind. Right. When a man is trying to do what a man is trying to do, mm. he needs a strong woman behind him. True, true. Speak to that from a relationship perspective as well. Um. You ain't got to get personal. No, nah, honestly, I think my life would be better if I was more consistent. But okay. I'm just not. Because, uh, it's. I mean, when I was young, I wasn't consistent just due to the fact that I was a, you know, a little, a, a little, I was a little a man thought, you know, mm-hmm. you know I was doing my thing out okay. here, you know. But pray for the man thoughts. Pray for the man thoughts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's hard out here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's a lot of beautiful women, especially in Atlanta. But, uh. I believe when I start trying to like figure out, okay, I want to do, I want to be in this relationship. Mm-hmm. I was a sad nigga to so many like polarized relationships yeah, yeah. that I kind of over time had lost faith mm-hmm. in the. Well, let's get matching fits and let's go out. Let's take a mm-hmm. picture like mm-hmm. that whole Martin and Gina look. Mm-hmm. It was just a facade because okay. I was the always dude in the back because I was never pressed about relationships because I was always moving, mm-hmm. you know. And even when I'm down here, shit is like eighteen to one. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's kind of weird. And then the the better I'm doing, the more it seems like it's coming. Mm-hmm. But I don't see. I, my whole thing is. Beauty only skin deep. I really be trying to see what you got going on. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. it's just not a lot going on or people ain't that close to God mm-hmm. or people ain't got no real financial plan. Like, work, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's, it's it's a weird thing. And like I said, I think that still come from us being in a generation or just leaving that generation where we didn't have that mother and father to show you mm-hmm. how it's done. So people just doing them. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. But uh shit. No one teaching you how to be married. Like I don't know how to be married. I haven't seen too many my mother and father was done before I even came out. You know, like okay. they know why my name is Ryan. You know, my name was supposed to be Orlando Xavier Williams. But they got into a fight before I got out and her pettiness, mama <laughs> She was, oh, mama, watching, putting you out she was there. watching Ryan's Hope oh, in the corner. Mama, no, he named didn't. me Ryan because uh-huh. of damn soap opera. Uh-huh. Her first boyfriend, nigga named Dirk. Shout out Dirk. <laughs> That's, that, name, That's where your middle name no, no, came no, no, from. No, actually, okay. it was Dirk. Uh, Dirk, was, Dirk know about it, but yeah, it was her first love and prom. Her, mm-hmm. this dude, she went to homecoming with named Keith. I've never even met this man. Uh-huh. That's my middle name. Oh wow! And then I kept her real name instead of being a junior. And this, wow. this, 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 how serious my mama is with this anger. Like straight gave me a whole whole another brand new identity. name on on yeah, like oh, wow. on the spot, like yeah. So, but I say all that to say I've never even seen them embrace in that yeah. type. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So even me being not a victim, but me being a, a product of not really knowing, you know what love look like as far as with your parents, you know what I'm saying? They got love for each other, but I ain't never seen them hug and kiss or nothing like you know that. What? So I wouldn't know where to start 
unless I'm looking at something I saw on TV or, you know, what I want to watch, waiting to excel at a notebook or something and try to figure right, it out. Try to you know, but like, you know what? That's real. That's what people yeah. are doing. Yeah, and I don't want to cut doing. you off, but that is where we talk about social media. We talk about social engineering. We talk right. about these are the images that our people are seeing, our yeah. children are seeing. Yeah. I have to be transparent, too. Like I said, my mother was my mother, strong woman. She didn't give a damn about nothing and nobody. Yeah, so I didn't. I never saw play. her be timid to anything, yeah. not even a man. And my father, like I said, he was never there. He was gone by the time I was um, one. Mm -hmm. But he was abusive from what I heard. Okay. So I'm thank God he was gone. Right. But for me, I'm divorced. And my daughter's 14. And she's never seen her or my father. She did. She knew we was married. Mm -hmm. But she was like, I ain't never seen you all hold hands, kiss or nothing. Because right. by the time she was three, we were done. Mm -hmm. You know? And so I really had to step back and say, you know what? I stayed in I stayed in the house with him even though we were divorced and I said, damn, I'm really damaging her more because she's seeing loveless people. Right. So now at 14, she's growing up and she's hard. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this child tender again. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because she has seen. Because I don't want her to miss the mark of being a dynamic woman mm -hmm. because she never seen her mother in love or she right. never seen her father. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's not deep. your fault. You know, it's, it's, yeah, not it's not your fault. never taught. Yeah. And this is why we're having this conversation because we're breaking all of these cycles. Yeah, yeah. We have to break all of these cycles. Mm -hmm. And I want people to understand in order for you to be who you are as a man, you do need a great woman. Not a good woman, but a great woman. And it Thanks. started off with your grandmother. Yeah, it yeah. started off with your mom. Mm -hmm. Whoever is going to be in your path, and I just pray that you continue to have the head on your shoulders because there's a Appreciate lot of ass that. and there's a lot of titties out here. Very much so. A lot. I like they, ass and titties. Like, I don't think I don't like them, but it is a lot. He loves. It's a lot. But be careful. Be mindful. Yeah. Be you, mindful. you got to. And like you said, yeah. if she don't have a plan... What is she doing in your business? And that's the thing. Like, that's the main focus, man. Like, <laughs> you're not getting no, I'm not getting no older. I'm no younger. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like really just trying to, because you would want to be a friend with your wife at first. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I got I got partners that's married now, and I mm -hmm. swear I interrogate the hell out of them. Like, I just be trying to figure out mm -hmm. how's it going. Like, all right, bro, you on, you on month three. How's mm -hmm. it going? Like, you ready to break up? Like, y'all mad at each other? Like, what's going on? Because a lifetime long as hell to me. Like, it's just long. And I mm -hmm. and for me not to see nobody, like, really do it and stuff, like, got my auntie and my uncle. They did it a strong 50. Mm -hmm. Got another auntie and uncle, about 60 on them. But that's just too. I just don't really politic with married couples like I guess I need to, you know. And I, I hear it's hard. Like, I hear you got to go to church and, like, go to counseling. Like, it's a process. You know what it's the like process is? It's, it's doing who you are as an individual. Uh -huh. And then it's also being comfortable with who you are as an individual. Because even in that marriage, you're an individual. Were you married? I was married. Okay. I got lost. Okay. Because I didn't, I forgot who I was. Before mm. I got married, I had a life. I was, you know, like you said, a sorority. <laughs> Six figures doing my thing, mm -hmm. got married and just totally lost. You would have never realized who I was. Did you feel like I you lost married. yourself? Oh, I did lose myself mm -hmm. because I was trying to please him. Mm -hmm. I was helping him with his dreams. We used to own businesses too. And I fell back okay. on everything okay. and totally lost myself because I didn't take care of who that woman was, that individual was. And again, I didn't have that reference. Right, right. You know, that reference is is powerful. Yeah. I want to talk. There's a, O has a question. How important do you think it is to teach the next generation to love their parents like they would love their spouse? Do you think these lessons will fix the curse or not, knowing how to love or stand with a strong spouse? Oh, that's player. That's play. Okay. He he probably, they probably it's O a woman or a man? O was a man. Okay, O a man. All right, so. I'm a RP my grandpa. I'm gonna tell you something he told me. Mm -hmm. Um told me basically, um, and it, it, it might if it's not if it's not my grandpa, it might have been my uncle. I don't wanna I don't wanna say who the game came from. Mm -hmm. But uh, wrong. I wanna get them their props. So basically let me know. And this is another reason why I'm not married. Okay, so a woman how can I say, okay. A woman is, um, okay, before you get married, you should look at a woman as if she's your daughter. Okay. And I know this, like, okay, what that's you That's strange, right, but go right. ahead. Very but that's strange. real, let though. Me, let me explain that. Go okay. ahead. So, when you think about what you do for your daughter, right? Mm -hmm. All right, you provide, you protect her. Yes. You provide for yes. her. Uh, pretty much everything, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel as a husband, 
these should be the same things you do for your wife. Right. You know, even right. when she make her money, that's her money. But mm-hmm. you should be in a position where you provide for her financially, mm-hmm. stability wise. You her protector. Correct. And I think that's the reason why the father pretty much gives your way, gives you away to her because sh- she's pretty much your responsibility now. Yes, you she should, is. And, and as I as I raised her and show her how a man should be and what a man shouldn't do, mm-hmm. I'm giving her to. I'm giving her away to you because I deem you the man to take over from what I've Most shown definitely. her to do. So that's what I mean when I say that. And I feel like if a man not financially or mentally in that position, then he playing from the jump. Mm-hmm. And I say that I say that period. So it's never really mm-hmm. no pressure with me and women because I until I'm there, I don't even want to even play that game with you. You know, right. like that type of game. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a it's a long term game, and I feel like people don't go in it the right way. You know. We go in it half behind, half assed, and we go <laughs> into it, you know, selfishly. Yeah. You know, when you when you in a relationship, and, and especially when you're on purpose, mm-hmm. you got to have somebody who's on purpose. I'm not right. saying, you know, because, you know, my ex worked manual labor jobs or whatever. Yeah. Well, I did, you know, corporate America jobs and okay. vice versa or whatever. Okay. We don't mind washing toilets and different things of that, that nature. Whatever, whatever but one was on bills. purpose mindset and one wasn't. Uh-huh. But when you totally on purpose like you're doing when a black man is grinding and doing what he needs to do, right. he needs that support. Yeah. You know, I got a gentleman right now. He just puts me in my place. It's just, it's, it's, uh, he pisses me off. But he's really helping me grow okay. because, you know, he was going out, do your thing, do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. And I'm like, no, you know, we, we trying to make something happen. He's like, right. no, I'm an individual. I'm going to still do my thing, but I'm going to come home. You know, and it's like, what? But he's on purpose. Okay. It don't matter. He's going to come home. He's going to do his thing. I have to be confident right, that right. I'm the one. I have to be confident. And a lot of us don't see that type of model either. Right. So you know, it's, a, uh... it's more than just be married for 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. It's, it's some dynamics to it. Right. And you have to have not only that model, but you got to have that trust. Do you feel like the experience that you had um, previously kind of brought you into this relationship? Mm-hmm. Most definitely, okay. because I didn't know a lot when I was married. And I'm going to admit that. I didn't know a lot at all. Mm-hmm. I, I was just existing. I knew how to have sex, and I knew how to... I thought I knew how to love, mm-hmm. but you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't that mm-hmm. I was selfish. I was ignorant to the fact of some things, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm growing up mm-hmm. at 48. I don't want our next generation to have to wait this long. Yeah. I want you to get it. Now we are D speaks. You think now. Dunamis D Devetta D she is not here. As I said, she will be back next week. I have the co-host wood, the one and only. We will be back in about 30. We'll be back in about two minutes. And at this point, I want you to come back because I need you to understand what the man, what he's doing. This is a brother that you will glean from, understand from. And um, I can't wait till you come back. I'll see you in a few. Yeah, yeah. This week on The Kitchen. Yeah. Yo, yo, hold up, tell me, alright. I just wanna answer what y'all asking. Uh, you got great. DJ DBI. Alright, yeah, hold up. Chef Chris. Yeah, hold up. Tell me. Porcelain Gold. Let's go. But well, that's the show, man. I yeah. thank y'all for coming. Then it was third. The next time I hope you get one. God blessing me often. I'm still looking in the apartment. Right. I know they're keeping my deposit. I got burn holes in the coffee. All I know is old. All I know is both. All I know is those. Look this out the door. 30 million people have been diagnosed with diabetes and 75 million with high blood pressure. Let's talk about the importance of cleaning the blood. 50 years of scientific research have shown that garlic, when taken in the right amount, can help to lower blood pressure, sugar level, and cholesterol, all while providing energy. How? through cleansing, regulating, and replenishing the blood. Garlic alone is powerful, but for over 41 years, we've discovered that by combining garlic, aloe, and parsley together, we help the body to clean the blood even better. You can 
clean excess sugar, cholesterol, and waste from the blood and promote better circulation. So don't delay. Do it today. Get your bottle of Gap Pills. Normally sells for $49.95. But if you use the promo word HEALTH, you get $10 off. Visit us at alloheals.com or call us at 404-996-6942. Welcome back to D Speaks You Think. I am Michelle Obasi. I have the one and only Wood. We are here. We are co-hosting today. Yeah. D is not here. I'm gonna keep telling you, she's a spiritual life and relationship coach. One, one, one of our sisters, and I know I talk fast. Son passed. She went to officiate. She's on her way back, but we had to hold it down. And I could not think of anybody else other than Wood to be here because not only is he a Midwesterner, not only is he on his grind, not only is he doing his thing, but he's a down to earth brother who has a lot to teach and men have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you. Thank you. Now this segment is all about you. I want to really know what's next. We talked about La Kitchen. Mm -hmm. I love to eat. I love the fact that you're a chef. I love the fact that you're an activist and do your thing. Yeah. Yeah. What's next for Wood? Um, What's next? Okay. Um, I hate the word. Um, I'm sorry. Don't worry What's about next it. for Wood is La Kitchen on a on a <laughs> on a major scale. Honestly, rolling out is a this family. So this mm-hmm. this platform is 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 got some stuff bubbling. That's you know we want to be on more screens, more you know, just more platforms. You know, just and at the largest you know. The largest capacity, you know. I want, mm-hmm. I want this to be something that people know the intro by heart, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Like this, I want this to be like nostalgia, you know. A whole generation that grew up on the kitchen, you know. Okay. Something that just is just said and everyone catch it, you know. That's it. Yeah, That's it. you know. So me, I'm doing a lot of things and efforts to make that uh, um, a, a dream come true because this is my dream. You're keeping hip hop our yeah, culture, yeah, and you're bridging it with culinary. Okay, yeah. talk about that because okay. that right there is powerful in itself. Yeah. So the kitchen, the show is you know if you never uh, caught on or caught a show or watch one, follow watch the kitchen. First mm-hmm. of all, it's on IG. You know we got a uh, <clears throat> rolling out site as well. You know that's yes www.rollnow.com slash the kitchen and that's just L E kitchen. You know with a E N right. Hmm. How you spell kitchen? You spell it the right way? Is that a real question? K-I-T? No, I'm, no, I'm just really wrong. trying Wait to understand. Wait a minute. I'm re- no, no. I got you. You didn't spell it the different no, way, No, lay you? is French for the. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then kitchen is just kitchen, so it's you really know, like the kitchen. I'm from I'm South Side of Chicago. You're going to have to tell so me. So you telling me people from the South Side of Chicago can't spell kitchen? Just spell it out for us. Come on now. Don't play with us. All right, Joe. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> What we're going to do is uh, tell you about what the kitchen is, okay. and it's real quick. It's just a little 30-minute show that uh, basically I interview restaurateurs, bartenders, and um, prominent chefs. Mm-hmm. And I pretty much just give them a platform like you gave me to mm-hmm. talk about what they got going on, uh, what got them in cooking, their background. You know, like musicians, they get this opportunity a lot. But, you know, chefs really like an unsung story. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, they, to me, from my, you know <laughs> – my experiences, I realized chefs really got that bag. You know, mm-hmm. restaurateurs and restaurant and bar owners, they got that bag. Mm-hmm. A lot of these rappers, people, you you know, it's a lot of cap, you know. But if you own a restaurant and you seeing people go in and out yeah. every day, it's money being made. And them are the stories I'm trying to tap into, you know, people that know how to run a business and start one. Mm-hmm. A lot of time it's not coming from a uh, easy background, you mm-hmm. know. So I just want to always uh, get them they roles while they own, you know. And the second half of the show, uh, pretty much, I do bring that artist on. But instead of having them in the um, interviewee, you know, type mm-hmm. of segment, I want to create a vibe. I want you to be on my show and feel like I'm your family. You okay. know, so I want you to just saying about whatever you going through on the media or the tabloids or mm-hmm. whatever's negative. I want to mm-hmm. really talk about you, mm-hmm. what you want to talk about, some unorthodox questions that. I would have had to really go into your life mm-hmm. and care about to ask because I know right. this is something that you want to talk about. And at the same time, we simultaneously making your favorite dish with my my twist. 
Okay. You know, so it could have been peanut butter and jelly, you know, but I would have cut off the, the bread. You would have cut off the crust. And made it, yeah, made it a panini and oh, put like a gave go. on it or something like that, you know. So it's I, I'll freak the recipe, and then we'll let you know where you can find it on thekitchen.com. Mm-hmm. And then we come back for like a little impromptu freestyle with like a DJ and – I got, you know, beautiful butter girls that serve as taste testers, that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because everybody don't want to see me, you know what I'm saying? So I, I try to give you a little something to watch while you're checking it out. And, you know, that's the kitchen. Every episode, I have a different DJ, a different mm-hmm. uh, restaurateur, a different artist. And, you know, it's plan to go on forever, man, even when I'm done. You do know? you cater? I definitely do. Um, Tell us about that. Because I, right. saw your, I saw your food. I'm a foodie. Yeah, yeah, I'm a foodie. I love food. And I'm I appreciate a vegan. that. I pre- yeah, now, so I'm a vegan though, but I love. I still I've been look working at on meat. that. Shout out to Pinky and Slutty Vegan too. They taking over Atlanta, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, you tap tap in with her too. Um, she gonna be on an episode real soon. Okay, but um, yes, I do cater. I appreciate you saying you saying my food because you know I got different sites, mm-hmm. but um. I meet so many people since I, Atlanta just showing me so much love. Yeah. You know, I um I found it kind of overwhelming to be able to cook for everybody Mm -hmm. so what i'm doing now is these weekly blogs that we finna roll out real soon no pun intended and uh we actually finna i'm finna finna make something different every week show you how i'm making it give you the recipe and Mm -hmm. then when it's done i'm gonna have different celebrities stuff pop up on me and get pull-up plates okay and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a nice professional picture of that plate put it on uh you know my social networks Mm -hmm. and uh, allow cash, allow you to be able to cash at me, you know, the money, mm-hmm. and I'll, you know, put you in the order. And that Friday, I'm going to pop up at different, you know, uh, studios, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, billboards and patchworks and rehab okay. studios. And then you can just pull up on me and get to meet me, talk to me, and then eat, be able to catch my food. But it'd be done like a more of an organized, right. big way. You know, I, I I can't pull up like I used to, but right, I'm, still, right, I'm right. still down, you know what I'm saying? So you can pull up on me at the studio and tap in and then support the whatever studio I'm at and then get you something to eat, you know. So that's going to be rolling out again about another two, three weeks. So tap in. You know what? And I'm I'm glad you're saying this and I'm asking yeah. all of these questions because this platform is not necessarily about us. Everybody uh-huh. knows that we are women empowerment. We are life and relationship coach. Everybody knows that we are breaking down and rebuilding lives and relationships one conversation at a time. Mm-hmm. We are empathic about our men. We are empathic about everything that we do for women it's about healing that's the core of everything that we do Understood. and i love the fact that and i can speak this hopefully and i'm right that you do that healing through food you do that healing through built bridge and that culture yeah. what is your cause what is it that wood is most passionate about this that gets you up every morning i know it's not just one particular thing but talk um, about that what get me up every morning you mean as far as like um my drive your drive. My drive. Um, how can I say it? I'm going to be honest with you. The kitchen is my lane to get to so many different places. Mm-hmm. So the kitchen needs to get where it needs to get so everything else is butter. You mm-hmm. know, I've always I've always done a lot of things when I was coming up. And I, uh, what, what's that saying? Well, uh, master of many. Uh, what, how the saying go? Uh, uh, jack of all trade, jack. master of none, exactly. I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I can draw. Mm-hmm. You know, I threw parties. I first cat the bar future to St. Louis a mm-hmm. long time ago. So the promoting still there. Um, I want to be more of a personality. I want to act. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to do my own. I got more content as far as me cooking different cooking segment, mm-hmm. cookout shows, uh, cook offs. It's a lot of things I want to do. But that's a bag of what are you doing? You know, so mm-hmm. I want to get the kitchen and that content and my personality out to the people as much as I can. So. Everything else that I decide to do, it just makes sense. Oh, I know. Right. Well, yeah, his ass be rapping all the time. I <laughs> kick so many freestyles in the kitchen, mm-hmm. I've been waiting for it. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay, well, I've, I've been seeing him judge this and this and that. Oh, it makes sense that he do a cookout mm-hmm. or cook off and put other people on, you know. But even with all that, my main thing is to get people cooking. It's uh, it's an easy bag. It's mm-hmm. money. It made people happy. You, you've never seen a flip like this unless you've been in the streets. You would never be able mm-hmm. to get somebody to buy a pan of green beans for $40 and you get a, a get a can of green beans from Aldi's for three bucks, four bucks, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you could put some potatoes in and in in some green beans and sell a pan of vegetables for mm-hmm. $40. Now, I ain't, if you got something that. The six dollars they can make for it all, you tell me, because I'm selling that too. You that's know, and that's a real hustle. You know, oh you my know god, like, that's that grind. I don't that know money flip like that, other than food. You know, so mm-hmm. that's my whole thing. I would love to just talk to more um, 
institutions. I want to go in these jails and let them yes, go. Yes, yes, yes. Start cooking with a lot of these prisoners. And uh, I really want people to be like, yo, I, I was down bad, bro. I got out. You know, I was in the joint. I watched the kitchen, man. And mm-hmm. when I got out, the first mm-hmm. thing I did is go to a kitchen. Two years later, this is me, bro. But mm-hmm. it's you. You know, so. Yes, 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 yes. That's my goal. I ask that because you're speaking it out in the, in the universe. Yeah, and yeah. I can stand in I agreement wish. with you right here, right now. And that's, that's why I ask these questions. It ain't mm-hmm. because I want to, like, you know waste time right because you're speaking these things and you have a cause and the Mm -hmm. cause is through what you're doing yeah the kitchen is a tool food is a tool but your passion is to raise up these brothers and these families and i heard it in your voice it's so amazing because i'm gonna tell you historically food brought people together Mm -hmm. you know it still does Mm -hmm. you know you go to big mama house potato salad whatever whatever it wasn't the fact of the food it was the fact that we were all in the kitchen cooking as women I was a little girl watching them cook. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that the men were doing whatever they did. If they were on the grill or whatever, it was community. Like on soul food. and Like soul food. And what I see La Kitchen doing is bringing that back. Mm -hmm. What I see young people saying, I didn't know about Julia Childs, but I know about La Kitchen. Exactly. I didn't know about, you know, whoever, whoever, but I know about Wood. Exactly. And that's what I want for you. And I'm going to speak that now because you're doing your thing. Mm -hmm. You are definitely doing your thing. All of that that you're doing. How do you unwind? Or do you unwind? Or does a black man even have time to unwind? <sighs> Ain't no sleep. Ain't no sleep. Ain't no sleep. Ain't no sleep. Nope. And I feel like I'm still lacking. It's okay. Like, yeah. Like, it ain't ain't of a pressure being applied because tomorrow ain't promised. Mm-hmm. And that's my thing. Like, it ain't promised. So you got to move as if it's not. Like, you know, seize the day. Carpe diem. Mm-hmm. Like, so every day I wake up. And I think that's why I love this city so much because... It's a damn playground. Mm. To How so? Me, How so? Man, I come from the jungle. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's uh, it's bad. So you can want to do a lot of things, but you just can't. In the, in and I want to show. From? I want to mm-hmm. do an interview. Mm-hmm. I want to. Mm-hmm. Meet Jermaine Dupri or Monica or mm-hmm. Rick Ross, but how? Ain't nobody come to St. Louis, and when they do, we all there because ain't nobody come to St. Louis. Correct. So everybody in one place pushing their product, and the reason this person here, he just coming and going. You ain't mm-hmm. catching them at Kroger's or mm-hmm. at the gas station mm-hmm. and being able to genuinely chop up what you got going on, mm-hmm. and it works. It's a damn playground. It's a playground, it's a playground. and you know what? I came from Chicago. And I came here just to do what I did, and that's open up doors. Mm-hmm. And, and rolling out, I think, I thank God for uh, Randy and Munson. Oh, me. They open up the door. And that's, now that this door has been open, and with Dunamis D and Dunamis Woman, she kicked down doors. Yeah. You know, and that's why I came here. And now I can go back to Chicago and say, hey, come on. We got back a door open. Hundreds. We got a door open. Yeah, I used to live in Chicago. You know? And I say I want. This is a question I had last night for you: Is what you gonna do with the loot? How, how you gonna How you gonna make your mark back home? Do you think it's a necessity when you grind so hard to even it's go a back? It's definitely necessity. I think cats that then left it ain't did it clowns now, you mm-hmm. know, and they know what I'm talking about. Like it's, it's so many ways you can do it, man. It's just, just um, shit non for profit. Like I want to feed the city, like mm-hmm. um, in a bigger way, you know. I really want to p- provide situations for people. They get out the justice center. They get out the workhouse. They mm-hmm. can come work in the kitchen and make money. You that's know, it. Um, there's something that's like uh, monitored by like me and a few of my my uh, culinary partners, um, and we just we create a, a culinary half mm-hmm. halfway house mm-hmm. instead of um, you going out to the streets and doing this that and the other. You can hone your skills and it be it, it damn near be a, a soup kitchen. So yeah. you work for the you work for the people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's it's stuff like that. I want to do this damn near like a, a double edged sword, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because you feeding the homeless, but then you helping the people that's just getting like on their feet, you know? Getting them, get, yeah, getting jobs, them ready. yeah, you know not what I'm just saying? jobs. So, you giving them hope. Yeah, and then you can have your corporate people running it, you mm-hmm. know, so, so they can feel like they're doing something. So, exactly, exactly. Yeah. We have a lot of good feedback today. I'm gonna be real with you, Wood. That's what's up. This is the most feedback in any of our shows that we've gotten. That's what's so up. I thank you for being here, sharing. Yeah. Oh. Jennifer Dunamis, even D is tuning in. She hey, says, speak the, true. Hey, hey. Speak true. So we thank you. Jane Jane, we acknowledge everybody. Mitchell appreciate Shelby, y'all. we appreciate you all. One of the things before we go into our last segment that I really want you to do is to tell everybody where we can find you. 
you know, you said it, you alluded to it, but I want this segment to be where are you on Instagram? Where can we get your catering? Okay. Where, where, where's um, Wood? All right, you can find me on Rolling Out every Tuesday, and that's www.rollingout.com slash La Kitchen. You can find me on IG, um, it's Wood. It's underscore. pretty simple. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's an underscore between it's and mm -hmm. Wood, but I don't even want to confuse you because it'll still come up. Just okay. type in it's Wood. If you're looking for me, like, what's bro's name? It's Wood. You know, all my pan handles will come up through that. Facebook is La Kitchen, you know, again, L-E Kitchen. Everything I'm saying is what it is. It's La Kitchen or it's Wood, you know. Mm -hmm. It should be pretty easy to tap in. If you want to get some catering to me, uh, follow my my websites and uh, get something. But uh, try to tap into them blogs and then my pages. So, like I said, next three weeks I'm going to start uploading different um, different recipes and you can tap in at them studios on those Fridays. And then Thanksgiving coming up, so mm -hmm. I'm going to link up with God is Dope. Because you know I speak to God in public. We go give out some food mm -hmm, at the God mm -hmm. is Dope location on Edgewood. So be tuned in for the day for that, you know. So it'll yep. be your first testing. Free food, right? That's, what that's they need, it. Right? That's so it. Yeah. It's all about giving back. It's this platform, like I said, it's not for us. It's about us being able to spread everybody else's news, good news, and the way in which we all grind and the necessity of a black man to grind is just historic it's necessary it's needed and we will not be stopped we shall not be stopped black man is going to rise up to wherever he needs to be in this earth and it starts with people like you Appreciate so forever grateful we got one segment left and it's our usual close down spiritual segment you don't want to miss it i ain't no church girl but i got something for you mm. the benediction we'll be yes in a second What's up, guys? This is Lipstick and Cognac. Starting on Tuesday, you guys will be on rollingout.com and on our Facebook page giving you all the tea you need for relationships. Here to help you out, man. Make sure y'all tune in from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Want to watch your favorite, your favorite, 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 favorite talk show, Lipstick and Cognac. Here to, with that dynamic duo, you don't want to miss Lipstick Shady O comics in this. Call you till I can end personality, man. It's gonna be a great time. Make sure y'all tune in. Tune in to rollout.com. This R O L L I N G O U T dot C O M. And also on Facebook, rolling out Facebook, man. It's gonna be a great time. Y'all don't wanna miss this. Great laugh, great talks, realness, truth. Man, we ain't really some expert. We know what we talking about. So make sure y'all tune in. Rollout.com, man. Lipstick and cognac. Hey everyone, it is your favorite politician, Representative Erica Thomas, and I'm excited to tell you about the Erica Thomas Show, where we break down news and politics in layman terms, where everybody can understand it. We start off the show with hip hop and politics, where we might interview your favorite celebrity, and we break down hip hop and let you know that it's the same thing as politics, baby. And also coming up after that, we have kids and politics, where we bring on your favorite kid stars, and they tell us all about how they feel about politics and then right after that is the hit list where we tell you about the fails of the week who failed this week in the news and who do we need to know about it's all happening at six o'clock every single tuesday i said six o'clock every single tuesday so you better turn tune in you better tune in you better not miss it i mean you better not miss it the erica thomas show is on live Welcome back to D Speaks You Think. I am Michelle Obasi. I am here with Wood, the co-host for today. D could not be here, but she will be here next week. Before we end anything, I told you it was a spiritual quote, and this is spiritual. We are really riding on the back of our ancestors. I don't have no biblical scripture for you, but I have a proverb. I have something that comes, runs deeper, and it's from uh, the word of God. We are really riding on the back of our ancestors. And if you don't know what today is, today is the day that we vote. Today is the day that you go out into those polls. Today is the day that you show who we really are. Stacey Abrams, everybody out here who is doing their thing, who is on these ballots, you all need to go vote. Now, we can't tell you who to vote for, but we can tell you that it's a necessity and it, it, and it has to be done. If you don't like the situation in this earth right now, if you don't like the fact that black men are getting hanged again in Ferguson, Missouri, if you don't like the fact that people are dying in Waffle Houses and just going to Kroger's getting shot in the back by supremacists. If you don't like what's going on where people can't find jobs and different things of that nature, I need you to get out and vote. You can talk about it on social media. You can do what you want, but it's time to vote. Our ancestors yes. went through hell. 
That situation in St. Louis is serious too. I want y'all to uh, very serious. You know, I know we got a heart. We ain't got too much time, but uh, you know, tap into that man. Young brother was uh was hung in his mother's backyard. Yes. You know, for, uh, you know she had something to do with you know uh, she was part of the campaign for Mike, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just seeming like you know they're not letting it go. You know, so we got to press the issue and figure out what's really going on, man. So RIP that man and uh. You know, just hold hands over St. Louis and hold hands over everybody. And shout out to Brie and everybody else down there, the, you know, the Democratic Party just pushing Stacey. Mm-hmm. You know, just getting everybody out there. Shout out to Oprah. Shout out to Barack. You know, like I said, mm-hmm. I'm not telling you to vote for it, but all these people is. So. Mm-hmm. That's a thought. We are D Speaks You Think on Instagram. D Speaks the letter you on think. D Speaks You Think the letter you on Twitter. Dunamis D, Dunamis Woman on all of our social media. Follow us. And then also, Great Man conference i talked about it last week we have a replay bit.ly backslash great man 2018 you will be remiss this is black man speaking to all people dondre whitfield was there uh we had hassani pettiford we had so many great people dr dennis kimbrough came on we're wrapping it up we love you we thank you d i can't wait to see you next week wood you coming back brother you coming back And I thank you, and we love you. Go out and vote. One love. Continue blessings.